Ghosh, Director Management, Dr. B.S. Hodi, Principal UG, Dr. Sujata Kane, delegates from various in the institutes and countries, faculty members and dear students. I feel honored in according a warm welcome to all of you in an inaugural session of Secondary Finance Seminar, Managing Finance During Crisis. Today we have with us 16 foreign, 60 foreign delegates from 35 <coughs> Flowers speak more than what we can write. With these words, may I request our Chief Administrator of the group, Mr. Suren Sooth, sir, to please welcome our Chief Guest with a bouquet of flowers. Mr. Rajesh Gulati, he is the President of Hero Motors.
You know, if you really look at the subject of our seminar, which is managing finance during crisis, and as yesterday's speaker said, that it is not a matter of crisis. We are we living in a world, we are living in a world where we go through one crisis and another. As if we have become accustomed to living in crisis, or the plural, than crisis, and the singular. If we really ponder about the subject, the subject matter needs to be looked at at the micro level of an unit, or an organization, or the macro level globally. When you talk about micro level, it may be set down. It may be a geographical region, or a country, or we look at it totally at a global. Now, when we look at it at the micro level, which is the exclusivity of looking at this thing, that means as if the sector is absolutely cocooned from all other interferences, so exclusivity of the sector vision cannot escape the need of the world being looked at at the global village. And the factor that influence this scenario float across the countries like cloud, and they are not bound by the geographical boundaries. So therefore, this kind of exclusive view is not possible. And if you really look, uh, uh, you know, scan the horizon, the financial horizon for the last five years, let's take five years, we are witnessing a financial sector turn around, being brought out from the brink to again revival. The intervention processes, because this has been made possible by various intervention processes. The intervention processes are, however, doubted by some areas, by some people, and the bailout or the incentive, as the case may be, being seen as poorly, either poorly conceived or untainted with vested interests. Talking about India, the developing countries like India are of focus of special interest. When you don't talk, we will call the BRICS, the established developing countries, or you call about the MINT, which is the newly formed developing country conglomerate. The views are of special concern as the competitiveness among the big countries vis-a-vis -vis the world economy. Talking about India, and all of you have read the newspaper up to date. The forecast of 4.9 GDP is a sharp contrast to the life we have led in the last maybe 10 years or so, the growth pattern that we have seen. Especially of concern is on two sectors which bother us, the agrarian sector, the agriculture sector, and the manufacturing sector. In fact, we have been trying to concentrate on those sectors because it is those two prime movers which will take us forward. The conundrum that you see in the economic scenario of the world today raises a very, very vital issue. The issues are so vital that it forces some of us to take an extreme sectors actually help progress economic growth at all, or whether it is only a side show which occasionally implodes, <coughs> periodically implodes. If it is a latter, that means it's only a shy show and it improves periodically. The solution is to private many of the current activities of the financial sector and allow functions of a few only major monopolies of the financial sector and regulate strictly everything else. This is a reference to the thought process that is commonly now known as making finance boring. On the flip side, we don't believe in this. If the finance is the center to all economic growth, especially in India, then we have to look at the finance sector, not only for, as a major prime mover of the enabler, but also to, has to restrain the capacity of the financial sector to do damage to the economy. Issues that will come up if we treat the finance sector being the central and core issue of the economic growth will be, to my mind, some of those issues will be, to what extent competition will be allowed to have a free play, and to what extent should competition be regularized, point one. The second would be the scenario of public-private interface, the areas where it should be allowed, the extent to which it should be allowed, 
the mutual support which one should lend to the other and the basic question of accountability of each sector to the other or to the public in general. The third will be a policy definition, and I say definition of the policy. Policy definition regarding government intervention, the concept of control, and the concept of bailout. The fourth issue to my mind will be the, to identify certain basic core sectors and core institutions which will keep running, which has to be kept running for the larger benefit of the society. And this is important because this is where the public sector comes in. Though individually they may threaten to plow in and deplete the capital, but those sectors will be necessary to be continued. And finally, the issue of, 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 of economic growth as a balancing effect, identify inequality. Because when we talk about the growth, is it we are looking at the size of the pie, or also we are looking how the pie is sub-fragmented and divided? <coughs> because identifying inequality is one of the present topmost global risk. The economic growth shall not only refer to the size of the pie, but also this the distribution. The skewed income distribution turns the growth in the long term, very dangerous. And in a process, what is known now as the economy of exclusion. And the wasteland of discarded potential which would have been harnessed. Especially of important for India in view of the factor of demographic dividend that we all talk about. We need to take a call, and this is relevant. We need to take a call whether to focus on the removal of inequality now, or believe that this can be dealt with after the mass poverty has been eliminated. The Reserve Bank Governor, Raghura Maharajan, had in his famous book, The Fault Lines, a stated that all of us, many of us, see the danger, see the crisis, and ignore them specifically. Either we don't know how to handle it, or we ignore those because we have vested interest in ignoring them. And, in fact, issues that Raghuram Raja has laid down in the fault line continues to be. He published a book five years back. When the paper book edition came up, he sort of re-regulated. He re-sort of, you know, made it topical at that point of time. And he sees, he saw that those fault line dangers still exist. And finally, this is an educational institution. How does it fit in? How does this subject fit in into our setup? One is that we create budding values. They are the people who will be governing the future of the finances tomorrow. So it's a matter of what kind of faculty, what kind of processes, what kind of a curriculum, what kind of input factor we put into them. The thought process that we put into them will govern tomorrow. Sadly enough, perhaps, ladies and gentlemen, looks like a very heavy topic now, huh? managing finance and crisis. And I agree with the Professor Ghosh that uh, some of the things I picked up from you that uh, it's not only CRI, ACS, but it's a plural crisis now we have to manage and get to the businesses. Uh, you know, in my 22 years of career, I have seen business cycles. I have not uh, been to that much of experience like many other people. But in last 20 years, there is a lot of uh, shift in the business environment uh, which has taken place. You know, the first 10 years from the 90s and then next 10 years from 2000 to 2010 and now the current scenario. How the businesses have changed in these years, you know, the, 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 how the pies which were small have, getting, uh, have got bigger and bigger and what challenges are coming in the today environment. I remember very well during early 90s that, you know, no, it was all a supply-driven economy that, you know, there were no choices available whether we talk of consumer levels or whether we talk of automotives or in the financial services sector also. It was all driven by the supply side. The choices were not there. You know, I remember after joining my job or after one year, I wanted to have my own two-wheeler loan and I had to at least visit 10 bank branches 
and nine out of them, uh, that those ten refused because there were so many requirements to be complied with, or I was not qualifying the requirements, uh, and you know I had to wait for few months to get it. Either some income criteria were not met, or some documentations were the issues, or the banking regulations were not allowing to uh, give such unsecured loans, etc. But now the situation is completely different. Now the banks are queuing at your doorsteps to lend you not only housing loans, corporate loans, project loans. So the situation is completely different. <coughs> In the automotive world, where we used to have only one car on the road, only two, three models, but now there are plenty. You, you can't even count on your fingertips. Auto Expo is going on, I am sure you will be visiting. You can see how many new models are coming up. So the, there is a lot of change happening in the, uh, in, the, in the whole industrial sector and linked to this is how the strategies have played in the last 20 years to, to take the economy to the next level. We are down to 4.9% growth level. We are not used to of such low growth. We did experience good uh, growth, you know, um, uh, 2006 to 2010, but uh, last two years have been not so good. But at the same time, the opportunities can be tremendous because India is still unexploited to a large extent. Just before this seminar, we were talking about the rural uh, penetration, uh, how uh, India is, uh, you know, uh, demographics are. And large part of the country is still unexploited. We still don't know what the people in those uh, living in villages uh, want. We, do, uh, we are not able to service the products with them. And there is large potential available and more than half the country is still living there. So having said this, the business is really, really uh, from simple to complex, it has got, and from complex to complicated. So in the today's environment, when, when where India is not only the market, but world is the market. <coughs> and a few years ago, we were sharing, we were having, uh, we were used to share, measure market share by, by way of, you know, how much is the market share in the country. You know, we, both in motorcycle business as well as in bicycle business, we do enjoy the leadership position. Also, we have enjoyed this, but now that is not the comparison. Now, it's the world. World is the market. So the territorial limits, the border limits, are only artificial boundaries for us. Now we compare ourselves with what is the production level or what is the share of business in the whole world. World is the market for us. So, but this is no choice, but also compulsion at times. <clears throat> so we we have to choose. Now, why this is happening is because there is always an aspiration to achieve something, or something there is a, whether the employees whether the government, so all the stakeholders, the, the end of thought has been uh, given into this and everybody has contributed and gained out of the whole business journey. So when, when we, when we, few days ago we were also having a business strategy meeting and we, we were uh, having all this discussion that how the businesses uh, have, have uh, are being treated. It's like a, it's like a chess, chess game, you know. So, so in chess you have king and the queen, the whole protection of the whole court is there, a lot of pawns at the front, but you are playing against one player. So if you are playing against one player, you know, you, you can you can preempt the strategy, you can take up some action and he will react to you. But in business, <coughs> it's not only one player. So if I take one step, there will be maybe five or more uh, people who will be taking steps against you. So the reactive and the and the proactive approach uh, towards the businesses, towards the strategy, I think that becomes very important. I, I had the opportunity to work with some of the joint venture companies also within the group. Uh, I, <coughs> I was introduced that I was heading as the CEO of Jerry uh, Kilo Chassis Systems. And uh, though we claim ourselves to, to have done very well within the Indian environment, environment but you know, if we, if we compare them, who are present in let's say 130 countries uh, with numerous plants. So what's the difference between our business environment and their business environment? I don't know if some of the members are from Germany or no, I'm talking of something called ZF. Uh, the, 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 the mindset is that there is a constant vision towards the long-term strategy of the, of the company. So there are during the year, defined business strategy meetings, uh, which looks at you know five to ten year horizon, 
uh, that how the company has to strategize itself uh, towards towards new technologies, towards new growth areas, and then those business tra strategies are divided into let's say the budgets, annual budgets, and then the milestones, and within the milestones, what targets have to be achieved, and then it inculcates down to day-to-day -day, uh, budgetary control system. Right. So you know, the forward looking, every action today, if I take, if we take in the business today, has an impact on today's business environment, but also on the future. So every action has to be well thought through, you know, in, in terms of, uh, and, and you know, particularly if, if some of us are, are are going to be, let's say, future CFOs or, or financial controllers, uh, they would know very well the impact of any action what it is going to have on the business today and, and, and going forward. <coughs> in terms of that, any decision which is taken today has to be, let's say, uh, well thought through. Uh, so when I say that uh, well thought through, means it, it does not mean that only one person has to uh, uh, think, think of this. But now, because of the complexity of the business environment, there is, a, there is more and more, uh, let's say, uh, endeavor to have uh, CFT, the cross-functional teams. So you know, because it is not only finance who who, who has to who has to play a role in, in, in taking uh, some financial decisions. But that since the decision impacts across the organization, the technology on the sales front also. So the cross-functional teams, I think those those are being pushed across the organization. That has led to the company-wide uh, spread of the decision-making process, and hence. Hence, the, the, the risk of uh, going wrong uh, reduces. How we have grown also so significantly is that we have to get along all the stakeholders, as I said in the beginning. So that, that means that whatever decisions, whatever important strategic decisions are there, it is involving the entire team. The problem-solving approach, the group-solving approach, that is something which has made the companies more robust the systems have become more, more, more robust, uh, you know, uh, uh, when it comes to decision making uh, within the organization. I, I, I give you some example, uh, you know, uh, when, when